Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, the Apostle Paul, after his conversion, invested his life to building the church. Not, not physically constructing it with his hands, but preaching and teaching and gathering people to be the church of God. And over the next several days, we're going to look at his story interwoven with his incredible teaching that really reflects our story. So we're picking up Colossians 1, verse 24. And Paul says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make known the word of God fully, the mystery hidden for ages and generations but now revealed to his saints. Uh, I'm just going to pause right there and just share a couple of thoughts uh, from this passage. First of all, Paul is practicing what he preaches. Uh, He's telling us that suffering for Jesus isn't terrible. He says, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and really for the sake of the church. Now, that's kind of a crazy statement, except in Romans chapter 3, Paul says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the Testing of our faith produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope will not disappoint. And, and, and what he's telling us is there is no short, uh, there's no shortcut, there's no quick way to develop the character of Christ in you, and that God uses our sufferings, our sorrows, our trials, our tribulations to grow us up in Christ. And Paul says, even in my life, I'm rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake. And so if you're facing difficulties, just go ahead and rejoice, knowing that God is with you and he's growing you in Christ. So we want to rejoice in our suffering. Uh, The second thing is that Paul told us he was a steward of the mysteries of God and of the truth of God. He says, hey, I want to make sure that that you know fully the truth about God. And, And here's the thing. If you're a follower of Jesus, then you also are a keeper or a steward of that truth of God. And now, as a pastor, I'm a professional steward of the truth of God, and I've got to give a, you know, an account of my life that's a little bit stricter than, than maybe the ordinary person. But if you're a believer, then God's trusted his truth to you, and he wants you to make it known to people who don't know the truth. So uh, I hope you know the truth, and if so, I hope you're sharing that truth, uh, just like Paul is challenging us to do. And then finally, uh, Paul talks about the mystery of the gospel. You see, Jesus as Messiah was a mystery until his death and resurrection. The Jews were expecting, anticipating, and wanting a political Messiah who would lead a military revolution and free Israel from the Romans or whoever was leading them at uh, at the time. But, But that's not what he did. See, God had bigger plans, and his plan was to provide salvation for all the nations of the world through the sacrifice of Jesus. And it was a mystery. It was hidden from people to understand that until Jesus' death and resurrection. And the day of Pentecost, of course, Peter's sermon and thousands of people come into faith started this whole revolution of belief. So uh, it, it, it isn't a mystery any longer, but it still mystifies people how God can love them and Jesus can provide them with salvation through his death and resurrection. But it's a mystery that we should make known. So I hope that encourages you and I hope that blesses you. Have a great day.